Thank you, Dr. Noah. I would like now to ask all our colleagues to come up and chair. Each have your chair. Uh, Dr. Jan Chiawan, Dr. Nicholas Padilla, uh, Dr. Victor Baji, Dr. Don Laporte, Dr. Billy Omen, Dr. Maina Linkov, Dr. Francois Sauer, uh, Dr. On Monday, but this session uh, shows the power of the Bibliotheque Alexandrina and the fabulous staff here to take a concept and a rather well developed focused effort, which is Ron Laporte's uh, super course of epidemiology and global health, and expand it into these four areas very important, societally important areas of scientific contribution to the needs of our countries all over the world. Under uh, Dr. Adley's uh, leadership and, of course, Dr. Sarah Galdin, this its expansion and these uh, functionalities accomplished in the last 15 months uh, is truly remarkable. And it shows a good judgment of Ron and Vint and the rest of us to uh, entrust our ideas to a place with the capability to implement them on such a grand scale. <laughs> Second, it takes uh, time to build an idea to a resource. And Ron will tell you, he's been working this idea with the interest from the WHO, the World Health Organization, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, National Science Foundation in the U.S., and other sources over many years. And to build it the way uh, Dr. Linkoff has with the uh, criteria for quality and the capability of the systems embedded for ratings and for improvements that I just described, uh, this is the power of long-term projects. And all of you, especially the young people, who are thinking about career opportunities, you want to have payoff for what you do, but you also want to find something that you want to stay with and create and build and draw others in to make a difference on a large scale. Third, I just came from a session with at least 40 young people from many, many countries, and so called a coffee hour uh, conversation with one of the scientists, and I had the privilege of being a scientist this morning, Many questions, but the most persistent question was, how can I learn more? How can I get training to bridge the fields of physical science and biological science, computational and bioinformatics, with biology and genomics and metabolomics and proteomics? And one of the ways to get started is to utilize a resource like the SuperCourse. And we talked about this specifically, that there are lectures, if you would enter under a particular topic of your interest, or enter under proteomics, or bioinformatics, or any topic in these four theme areas, you are likely to find slide sets which will give you a good start and introduce you to ways to learn through the tutorials that are available on the internet and through contacts with people to whom you can make inquiry, uh, both for direct learning and for developing projects, and then for seeing about possibly to go for training. So there are many, many applications of the super course. And it's a great pleasure to be associated. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I just, that's it. Uh, for those of you who are here uh, last night, I just want to reassure everybody that uh, Mr. Jean-François Martin uh, is fine. He spent the night in the hospital under observation. He's being released today with his wife, and he is in good health. So just so everybody knows. So. <laughs> I'm also uh, asked here that at the end of this session, if uh, we can have the uh, entire super course team available to for a group picture uh, right here where we are. But now, next step is really to move to Ron. Ron, when we started, at the time the library started, I started the library and you started uh, uh, 
presenting the, the super course here, so it's not the first time. Uh, we have advanced somewhat. And, uh, so like this place is incredible, and for you young people, the way I got started in this is that I had a large multinational project and in diabetes, and I found that sending a lecture to Mexico would take, sending a letter to Mexico would take five letters to reach Mexico in six weeks. And I went over to the computer center and said, well, do you have anything else? And the guy goes, well, this is in the early 80s, well, we have something called the internet. I'd never heard that term before. What is the internet? And they go, well, this is real simple. Basically, you can send a, a letter to Mexico in a minute. And I go, oh my God. And I asked him how much it costs. He said, nothing. And I go, well, this is my whole future, the internet. And then what happened is that basically, um, the, uh, I've had, had this, I'm, I'm a very immature person, and I decided about 20 years ago, the only people I was going to work with are people I liked. Well, I met Francois Sauer at the Pan American Health Organization. We started to develop this area over time, and it was wonderful. And then how I got to meet uh, Ishmael is my wife and I were taking a tour uh, of Egypt just as I was building the, the internet, building the supercars, and I walked in the, the, the uh, Library of Alexandria, and I thought, oh my God, this is where the supercars has to be. It can be no other place in the world. It has to be here. Forget about the Library of Alexandria. Forget about this. It has to be here. And Ishmael, Dr. Sengen thought I was crazy because I kept mailing him email after email after email after email. After email. It's like, this is where it has to be, this is where it has to be, this is where it has to be. And it was the wisest decision I've ever made because not only is this the, the, is the atmosphere here of the supercores and the philosophy identical, I found some people that I really like and love. I mean, this is, a, this is the way we do these things. Uh, and it, it's all, I mean, we've never had any money. It's all based on friendship and love. And that's the, for the world and not only for us. And I, and I love it very much being here. So I always tell as I finish up uh, this uh, that uh, the uh, Library of Alexandria is my second favorite place after 332 Bridgebrook Lane in Wexford, Pennsylvania. That's my house. <laughs> Second hope, yeah. And uh, actually, I'd like just to also point out something that has not come out in the presentations. And this is that the lectures are being translated. And uh, actually, we have a, a system uh, which is truly international. A new lecture comes in, especially a distinguished lecture like a keynote address from a scientific conference. Uh, Ron is in contact with the author, gets the permission to use it. It's shot out to Jean, who is sitting in Siberia. And uh, he mounts it in no time. And then from there, it goes to a number of people. Fina in Pittsburgh does her thing, but others also translate it into Arabic, into Farsi, into Chinese, uh, right, Professor uh, Wang, many other uh, languages. And uh, pretty soon uh, the lecture is, uh, is highlighted, as uh, Dr. Noah Hardy was saying, uh, on the internet to the community of practice. And uh, we observe that it shoots up in the Google page rankings uh, very, very quickly. And uh, uh, most recently, the H1N1 uh, lecture and the, the, uh, the earthquake lecture were rated what? Yeah, the H1 lecture was rated uh, number one out of, I think, about 10 million. And it was seen in China by about 40 to 50 million people. So you can see the scope of reach that can come from this uh, communal uh, effort. But at the same time, we have to recognize that some of the people we want to serve and to reach and to include uh, involves those who perhaps find it easier uh, to work with the material on DVD. And uh, there I mentioned very briefly, but I would like to come to Najib Shorbaji because it is thanks to WHO that uh, this idea of uh, reaching out to the deans of medical schools in all of the developing world was launched and where uh, copies of lectures on DVDs were distributed 
uh, through their good offices and of course using the authority in the name of WHO to make that material available to as many people as possible and to reach out. So uh, we really are very, very grateful and very supportive and uh, very honored of that collaboration. So, uh, Jim, would you like to say a few words from your perspective? Well, thank you very much. I think it's, uh, it's great to come back to Alexandria and to Alexandrina from Diotica. I have been engaged with the library before actually its inception. And I remember the first meeting I had with UNESCO, I think it was 1989 probably, when we were discussing what was at that time called universal availability of publications. The internet was nothing really known, not to Ron, not to me, not to anybody. And we were talking on how can we make knowledge more universally available to improve equity, to improve access, to improve the uh, way that people actually uh, take decisions and uh, decide on their own health and on their own life. And then, of course, being a staff in the regional office uh, here in Alexandria for six years, I was very much involved in what the library was doing. And then came, of course, the super course. And in both cases, actually, I thought that this is a great idea. The library and, of course, the super course. And it is worth getting engaged, getting part of that, supporting that, working with people, uh, using the different facilities, different uh, leverage that we have in the WHO uh, to put rubber of uh, stamp uh, to sort of uh, uh, for the material and its dissemination and its, uh, its reach out to people. And that actually fits 100% to the constitution of WHO where access to knowledge is actually, it's, it's, a, it's a basic right. It's, exactly like health. So the patient, the citizen has the right to access information to be able to uh, make better decisions and to know what's going on. Uh, so there are a number of areas that we are covering in WHO uh, which relate specifically to uh, information. And uh, WHO has six core functions and one core function in WHO is actually, I can read it for you, it's shaping research agenda and stimulating the generation, translation, and dissemination of valuable knowledge, which means knowledge that has been uh, peer-reviewed, it has been quality controlled, it has been organized, it has been uh, seen to uh, add value uh, to people. And uh, of course, uh, now we have uh, information or access to knowledge as a human right, and I think it was uh, uh, two weeks ago, there was a referendum in one country, in Finland, in which they would like to make actually internet or access to the internet as a human right. Of course, that, uh, that, that does not apply to many countries, especially in the uh, African region and Asia and all that, but that was discussed and it became actually like a law. Every single individual in Finland has the right to access internet in the same way as you have right for clean water, for uh, having a job, for having uh, a vaccine and for having education. And you probably know the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So it will be amended very soon to include internet. And hopefully <laughs> at some point we will have the super course. And uh, this morning we were discussing that each computer should have a super course inside it. So we say super course inside. Like, like, like some of the companies. Like <laughs> but actually, uh, our colleague Vince Sir, as the father of the internet, will be very happy. <laughs> and on that one, Ajit, we may, well, we're getting a visit from a very distinguished visitor uh, in a few days, right? Uh, uh, Craig Mundy. Uh, those of you who don't know that, Bill Gates, everybody knows Bill Gates. Uh, when Bill Gates uh, uh, retired from Microsoft to do all his work on the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, dealing with health, incidentally, largely with health, his job has been split into two. And Steve Ballmer handles the, the uh, chief executive functions, and Craig Mundy handles the technical functions. And he is making a special stop in Alexandria to see the work of uh, the Alexandria team on IT. Uh, so uh, we may be able to convince him, say, <laughs> bundle it in with, with your PowerPoint, or <laughs> something like that. But uh, uh, Mr. Owen, you've been able to get millions and millions and millions of people in, uh, in China to uh, download uh, uh, these lectures 
and you've arranged to have them translated, uh, mostly by volunteer student efforts, right? Yes, it's by volunteer medical students. P I work for the Peking Medical College, which is the most prestigious medical school in China. And the students tend to be focused on science, on medical things. As a public health professional, I would like to have students to know more how to apply science to the people's daily life. That's a simple course give me a venue to motivate the, the elite in Chinese medical field to kind of approach the community, which really make a big difference. And I think that one of the significant achievement is last year H1N1. When the H1N1 come out, a lot of the Chinese people, we think about 1.3 billion people are puzzled by this new disease, scared about that. And then different experts say different things. Super cause is the authoritative resource for the Chinese people. People think about, well, this is international famous authoritative scientific resource. That's really hold down the people, the help of people to stabilize the people hunger for information, and here it is. So that's why even include the central TV station invited me to, to be interviewed on the screen, which exposed you to the at least 20 to 40 million people in one second. So that is really very, very powerful. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bonsoir Sawa, did you really expect us to reach where we are now? Are we going faster or slower than when? Because you've been one of the very early veterans in thinking through this uh, idea. Are we on schedule or well, uh, behind your expectations or ahead of you? Well, considering your question, I will say that you are an alchemist. <laughs> an alchemist because you transform a dream into reality. Uh, building a virtual network of scientists willing to cooperate, to communicate, to coordinate. And this is a dream of our society. So I will say thank you. Thank you to all the, the team, and uh, actually behind each one of these uh, wonderful people is, uh, is a bigger team of people who should also be uh, thanked. Uh, but uh, Faina, uh, you, Ron, and I in particular have been struggling a lot on issues of quality control. <laughs> and uh, it really, uh, you were the driving force behind getting some of these quality control uh, measures uh, put in. And the issue is, is the standard peer review of journals the only way to evaluate things? And uh, on the other hand, user evaluation, uh, peer group evaluation as opposed to the conventional peer review of designated readers and editors by a, a journal are different techniques uh, that, that are there. And uh, the, you, you have found that the metrics and the multi-layered approach uh, so far seems to work quite well, and that there is not quite discrepancy, is there? Uh, basically, we, uh, Ron and I, we have been doing a lot of work in the area of peer review. And we wrote several, several papers uh, where we evaluated the peer review system, and we found that it's uh, subject to many biases. So for something like the super course, we found that it may not be effective. Although it works for many areas, for the super course it wasn't possible because internet is so vast and so huge. You cannot do peer review on each individual lecture. So we started to think about what we can do to make it better. And that's when we developed the multi-metric and multi-layer approach, which consists of many different components, including traditional peer review, uh, as well as many other more automatic options. Dr. Adley uh, beautifully designed the system where uh, we'll have a five-star rating on each lecture, which I want to thank your team for. So each member uh, of the super course, or even any person in this audience or around the world, will be able to rate lecture. 
Uh, so we are not looking for experts, we are just looking for your opinion. So everybody is invited to join us in this quality control venture. Additionally, we are trying to target lectures who are coming from uh, top level professionals uh, such as Nobel Prize uh, laureates and other people. Because our assumption is that if somebody got a Nobel Prize, their lecture is probably of good quality. In addition to that, we develop many other mechanisms. And one of the main things that I want to uh, highlight here is that Supercourse is about the internet, but it's also about people. So Supercourse is possible, and the quality control in the Supercourse is possible only with the help of our colleagues uh, around the world. So I want to thank everybody and invite you to join us. Thank you, Thank you. And you be, you're part of that. Of, you've been involved in, in so many things and all of this, making things happen. Uh, I must tell you, I'm a child of the sun, in Egypt, warm sun. <laughs> the idea of working in Siberia is just... Uh, <laughs> I, I think Nicholas Padilla and I are... <laughs> the idea of that. But he showed us spectacularly beautiful pictures, but they were in the summer. <laughs> the pictures he showed us, there were pictures in July and August, I don't, all the beautiful trees and all of that. So somehow my image of somebody working in Siberia wasn't exactly <laughs> what happened. But uh, Eugene, you've been in touch with the authors and ensured that the material gets up and mounted and uh, translated, and translated into Russian as well, many of the lectures. And how is that done? How, what? How is, how is, how is doing? Yeah. Uh, uh, the work in Siberia. So, uh, First of all, the, if uh, people uh, get information that I am from Siberia, even from the, my business card, uh, they say, oh, uh, I plan to visit Siberia, or, oh, I was already was in Novosibirsk, yeah. or uh, something for public, uh, Institute of Public uh, uh, Administration. I Siberia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but uh, actually, uh, because of, uh, of our joint program, I uh, visited uh, uh, Alexandria, so times during five months. So <laughs> my life is now is uh, uh, totally international. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's very <laughs> yes uh, divided between uh, Egypt and uh, and Novosibirsk. So, but uh, I also tell everybody that my car have central heating system. Uh, my garage have uh, central heating system, so it's no problem to to move around uh, Novosibirsk and uh, our yeah. house is very warm. And uh, so it's uh, it's it's uh, internet. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Again, we, we talk about internet, which gives possibilities to communicate very easily. And even recently, I uh, we using Skype, and I presented at uh, Pittsburgh for our, our own uh, class. Yes, and uh, and uh, uh, I, I would like also say that. Uh, because of frequent visit of Alexandria, we are starting. Uh, I, I have many friends now, and uh, one of them is students, as uh, Gil said, uh, young uh, generation, and some of them is here. It's uh, uh, students from agriculture uh, uh, college here, and some of them may stand up if they, they would like. Someone, someone is, is here. They are helping. Uh, <laughs> They are helping much in uh, agriculture uh, 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 topic for science supercourse. Well, thank you. And how about uh, Nicholas Padilla? You're, you're sort of a child of the sun, too, so... Yeah. <laughs> um, I am developer of the uh, Latin American supercourse in Mexico. It's based in Mexico with the support of the team of the supercourse. The Latin American Super Cruise was launched, launched uh, three years ago, and uh, it was very successful in Mexico and in Latin America. Now we have uh, 100 of faculty, and we have uh, more or less 500 lectures in Spanish, all in Spanish, and uh, more or less 30,000 of web access to the web page in, in May. The great successful was the lecture of Rashid Chotani from uh, H1N1. Because we are uh, one of the first medias 
to launch the influenza lecture to the world. And the super course and Latin American super course received many, many access for 10 days that we update the lecture. In, in um, 10 days, we began the lecture in Russian, Spanish, and English. In 10 days, is uh, in 14 languages. Wow. 40 languages, uh, it really shows you. And the ability to put that material quickly from authoritative people in an easily accessible fashion definitely has been the key. Uh, we have uh, questions from the floor that have come to me, and I have particularly three, three questions that I would like to share with the panel. And the first will go to Ron, which are, what are the golden lectures? in the super course, so you may want to explain that. Yeah, Feynman, do you want to talk about your golden lecture? Because you created the, fir the first golden lecture. Eric Moji? No, no, this was, it, it, that wasn't, we, we, we created one in the beginning. Uh, our golden lecture effort started about seven years ago uh, with the development of a golden lecture of prevention. And the way it started was really interesting. Because as we started working with medical and public health people around the world, we realized that not too many people realized that it was the prevention that had a key role in increasing life expectancy over the course of the last century. So in order to honor the role of prevention in increasing human lifespan, we created a Golden Lecture of Prevention, which consisted of about uh, 30 slides and was translated into about 14 languages. And people around the world like it so much. It was rapidly translated uh, and uh, distributed uh, in about 140 countries of the world within uh, of course, in about three months. And after that, um, our collaborators around the world, uh, they were so driven with this Golden Lecture that they started creating new Golden Lectures in different areas, such as hurricanes, and um, we also have lectures from Nobel Prize laureates and in many other areas. Yeah, I think the one other point with this is that if you look at the triangle of training, you have the PhD students, the master's students, the bachelor's students underneath, our target is really the bottom level of like the bachelor's students and the medical students with the idea, well, let's give them a little bit of information about prevention, but let's give it to millions of people. And we did uh, arrange once to have simultaneously broadcast around the whole world, yes. right? <laughs> Over a million people listening to Eric Noji's uh, lecture, including here in the library, where we had uh, a group listening here, right? Yeah. So that was another form of the, of the exercise. Uh, the second question really should go to Gil, and I think it's, uh, can we make a citation from the super course in a scientific article I'm writing? So the answer is yes. Um, it's very appropriate and nice to recognize sources of information as part of the uh, respected process. It is not required in the super course. In other words, as you heard, it is permitted to take the whole lecture, an individual slide, or information from slides and create new slides. All of this is empowering for your own work and for work of people all over the world. But it is appropriate, especially when you take a whole lecture or you take an individual slide, to indicate the source, just like you might put a journal reference for any other article that you cite. And I think the appropriate way is to say, from SuperCourse with the URL name of the person who presented the lecture, and probably the date. And then someone could find it at the URL and find the other associated information related to the uh, particular slide you utilized. You could even say adapted from when you change it, which is what I do when I take information from an article any other source and try to cite uh, out of respect to the person who did the original work. Thank you. The third question, maybe, maybe I should uh, take that one, is regarding intellectual property rights with the super course, uh, are there concerns? Well, there shouldn't be, in the sense that the, the slides are identified uh, by the, uh, with the authors, and that what we are hoping is going to happen is, uh, yes, you can use and reuse that material, 
because after all the authors have put it up for that purpose. Uh, we expect, as Gil just said, that uh, there should be credit where credit is due, we put sources, we put adapted from, we do whatever else is appropriate, but then that is up to you. And the risk there is no different and no greater than it would be from a regular article. I mean, somebody could swipe a page from a regular article and uh, not give credit, but I don't think that it would uh, I mean, be correct. So there's no additional risk that comes from the super course. In fact, in the future, the, when the super course really becomes recognized as a repository, then uh, the time at which somebody uh, has provided the lectures, the community of practice has seen it and so on, may well uh, be a way of presenting ideas quite early. We all know that uh, frequently ideas are discussed in workshops and lectures with uh, other people, they're bounced off other people, and uh, sometimes, therefore, that material will be available as well. But we intend to protect the identity of the people on the individual lectures. There were a, a number of technical questions that are really more or less yes, yes, or no, no answers. If you can run through these very quickly, please. I'll, I'll just add one more thing on uh, what Dr. Sarajin just said, is that we, uh, and this is connected to also a, a question here, will it, will it be possible to download the lectures from the super course? And the answer is yes, you are able to download the lecture from the super course. However, uh, the version that you're going to be available for download is uh, the PowerPoints are, are, are converted into images. And uh, the reason for that is that we are encouraging that you use the PowerPoint as is, or you can use slides from the PowerPoint as is. But we don't like that, you would, uh, that someone can change uh, 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 and give credit for it to himself or change the, the format of them. You can, you can take the information and do your, I mean, provide your own, create your own slide. But uh, uh, so this is this is this is why we are availing only the um, uh, uh, the images in the form of a, of a PowerPoint. And another question regarding contacting the author of a lecture that he's interested in. And the answer is, of course, you can contact the author. The, the challenge here is how to get the information of the author. Um, for instance, we have tried automatically to extract the emails. Uh, from, the, from the PowerPoint presentations. And among the 90,000 lectures that we had, we could not get more than 5 or 6 percent that they had emails. So this is again where the contribution from the, from the community and the network uh, would come in, is that you would need to um, you would help into writing down the uh, name of the author, maybe search the internet on his biography, place it on the, uh, place it on the, uh, on the page, and there is, there is a, a room for that, for other people to use it and to benefit from it. Uh, what about other, I mean, someone asking about other disciplines other than the four areas, um, and the answer, I guess, is yes, but we are experimenting with those four areas, and I think that this is going to be an open-ended project. This is not something that's going to end next year or the year after. This is going to be a, a continuous project. And uh, finally, a question about uh, video lectures. And indeed, yes, we are availing video lectures if there are videos. And actually, currently, there are some lectures that they are associated with videos. So they can be videos with PowerPoint or just videos on, on, on their own. Thank you, Noam. No. Yes, of course. I wanted to uh, pick up on the theme of the community of practice and just tell you as an example. When I came to China uh, a couple of times in 2006, through Professor Wang, I met many Chinese students medical students and Chinese medical school students who were working as the volunteer translators of these 3,000 lectures. And it was wonderful and very exciting. We talked into the evening and they came back another evening. And then I was there in China again just last month. And one of those students was my host at uh, Peking University where he just started working with the International Communications Department. I was the first visitor. And I recognized him and of course he recognized me. And then I was uh, arranging lunch with Professor Han, and he said, uh, if you want to go and see Jingxiang Park, I will invite some students who will go with you. And three students came, two of whom I had met, and we recognized each other from three and a half years earlier. So this is truly a community of participating colleagues, and especially for the students, it's a wonderful way to learn to meet people and to build friendships and ties all over the world. Indeed, indeed. Thank you for that. 
Uh, I I just, just two short comments on the uh, intellectual property or copyright and uh, the communities of practice. I think it's, uh, it's ethical that people put high quality information on the web, including, of course, the super course, and it's equally ethical that we recognize the work of other people when we copy or when we reuse or when we cite. So I think it's, it's really important to make it as a practice that we cite the super course or the specific lecture that is in the super course so that we continue to create this network of super course lectures uh, so that we enhance it and we make it even more global. If everybody uses something and then without a reference, without linking to it, then we create more silos, we create more islands, which I hope we will not do that. We want to create more web of science so that we expand on that. But on the communities of practice, I think the power of community participation at the scientific uh, level and communities and all that, I think it's very important. And I just want to second and support what has been mentioned by Dr. Siragiddin and Dr. Uh, Nuha. Please contribute to that. Now, there is a new concept which is called the uh, wisdom of the masses. And the masses is us. It's all of us coming together to bring more value, to add value to what is being there through our contributions and through our participation in these uh, efforts, uh, specifically the super course in, at Alexandria. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, as we are running out of time, I will pass by each of the panelists and see if you would like to have any last words. So we'll start with Dr. Wang. Any, any brief last word to the audience? Yes. First, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for the organizer to invite me to visit Egypt. This is my first time to visit Egypt. However, my heart feels so close to Egypt because the China and the Egypt both are among four early civilizations on the earth. And I think a lot of things regarding the super course young Chinese can do, young Egypt also can do, can make science more close to the people who feed us, who provide the food, provide the clothes to us. So let's work together to make science much, much more useful to our community, to our people. Thank you. I hope that the science of the course is necessary in Egypt, Africa, in all world, as the Latin American super course is necessary in Mexico. It's very successful. But if necessary, your support. Thank you. I am one of the most fortunate people in the world to work with these people. And I think uh, you as young people, what's most important are the people you work with and find good people and the people have the same passion as you do. And you'll be successful if you do that, you'll be happy too. So find, it's the network that's important, it's your friends that are important. Najib, anything more? Very quickly to say that uh, this is a real contribution the super course, a real contribution to universal access to information. I think it's, it's an obligation, it's an ethical uh, trend or value that we should support. And from our perspective, from WHO, we'll be committed to work with you. And hopefully in two years' time, this will be declared as WHO Collaborating Center. Thank you. Thank you for the honor of that uh, proposal. Yeah, Jim, what would you like to say? Last word. Uh, I uh, would like to wish to everybody 24 hours uh, access to internet as a human right and uh, I uh, invite everybody to join SuperCourse and uh, send me, uh, especially students, uh, send me a message and you can find my uh, email address through uh, Google. Yeah. And thank you very much for inviting me. Finally. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the organizers for having me here. It's been a wonderful event, just like the previous one that I attended. Uh, my last words would be uh, the fact that uh, we started Run 9 Public Health. Then, uh, with the help of the Library of Alexandria, we expanded it to four different areas, including environmental health, medicine, 
and to others. But I hope that with your help, uh, SuperCourse will be able to reach out to all areas of science and will become a model for information exchange uh, in Egypt and around the world. Thank you very much. Yes, well, I mentioned my dream uh, was the expansion of scientific findings and ethic. And I just want to share a quote from Voltaire about 300 years ago. Those who can make your belief absurdities can make you commit atrocity. And I strongly believe that the super course is a way to mitigate that. Thank you. Well, I would like to uh, invite all people in the audience and to tell your friends and your colleagues to join us in the super course, in the science super course. Um, actually, this, uh, this science super course, it's, uh, it's all about you. It's uh, without you. It's, it's not again, there, is, there will be no science super course. So, um, and I would like also to, to ask you to, um, uh, to join us into telling us what you like about the system, what you don't like about the system. It's a very complex system that we have been trying to assemble and as um, <clears throat> Dr. Um, Professor Oman said, it, we're trying to uh, transfer it from a concept into a reality. So we have, uh, we possibly, you know, I mean, there would be things that would be improve, improvement and this will be coming along in the next, uh, in the next few years, not, uh, not only in the next few weeks or months. And uh, I would like to end up by saying that uh, um, this system, of course, it has not been created by me. It has been, uh, it's uh, uh, Dr. Magdineke and myself, we have helped into the design. But actually, it has been done by uh, very, very young Egyptian engineers, whom I would like them to stand up and to join me into applauding them. So, I'm <laughs> So, how many of you have actually gone to the internet and looked at the super course? And Quite a few. Well, I hope next year everybody's hand will go up. <laughs> it's a magnificent uh, institution, a wonderful project. All of us are proud to be associated with you and your team. Thank you. I, uh, I'm glad you mentioned uh, you and your team because very frequently people try to give me credit for a lot of things that I've done here and it's usually other people who do it. And I was reminded uh, of a, a beautiful way of, of explaining this when uh, the great uh, conductor, uh, Barenboim, was uh, giving a, a concert here and people told him, oh, you make such wonderful, beautiful music. He said, wait a minute, did you hear any music? No music came out. I just waved my hands. It's the musicians who play. And in the library, it is all these musicians who play. Thank you all, thank you all, and we are adjourned for that. The Science Super Course team, on the stage please for the group forum. Science Super Course team.